Welcome back to the channel. Now today we're doing sewing 110 where we're going to discuss sewing, practicing how to sew straight, how to sew curves, how to follow the guidelines on your needle plate and the exercises you should be doing to get used to your sewing machine. So today is a practical exercise. Just get your sewing machine, follow along with me and get in touch with your machine. So let's jump right into the lesson. Now the first thing we have to consider is your seam guidelines. You see them on the needle plate. There's a close-up here. And now, some machines have the numbers on them. That's the measurements. And some machines don't have the measurements. And some machines don't even have any lines or indications on the needle plate. What are these measurements? They are actually just either inches like this or centimeters like this. Really, what happens, it just allows you to align your fabric when you're sewing so that you can keep straight and you simply set it according to your seam allowance. Now, on the one hand, of course, you can simply just follow the lines. I like sewing at half an inch, so I find where half an inch line is and I sew accordingly. But if you don't have the measurements or it's not easy for you to follow, Another thing to do is to make your own. So what you do, you take a measuring tape just like this. I'm just going to put one of the whole numbers directly under the needle. I'll put it on this dark line. So you put your needle under the, the presser foot. I'm going to put the presser foot down to hold it. Then I'm going to roll my needle right into that line. So my needle is in, I have my needle right in the tape. Now I can easily see the measurements. What I want, you can put it anywhere, you can put it at an inch or three quarters of an inch or half an inch. I want to know where half an inch is, I mark where that is and all you have to do just take something like this. This is a piece of masking tape. It's not too sticky. You can peel it off. It won't leave any residue on your sewing machine. So I mark off where half an inch is. And that's where I'm going to put this. That's half an inch, and I can take my needle out. Now, with this done, all it means is that now you can easily see where your seam allowance is. And when you're sewing, you just have to align your fabric with that tape and you're done. So that makes it very easy, it's a good visual for everyone, especially when you're just learning and you're practicing. When you get used to the machine after a while, you don't even need to do that. And on the alternative, you can always buy like a magnetic seam guide, like an accessory and put it on your machine. The very first thing is you should have threaded your machine. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, there's a link. Once you have your machine threaded, I want you to set your stitch length to 2.5 or 10, depending on your machine. So that's just your default stitches and that's what we're going to work on. Now I have a piece of fabric here. Um, I want to suggest for practicing, you should use plain woven fabric, nothing flowered or striped or anything, just plain so that you can see your stitches and something stiff that doesn't stretch like poplin, a simple poplin like this. It's easy to use and it's not slippery. If you're going to use lining fabric, get something of a similar texture. You just want something stiff and easy to work with. You can use Ankara, but the print of Ankara tends to be busy unless you can get a plain Ankara. But for practicing, poplin is cheaper and it's easy to get. And of course, if you have calico or muslin fabric, that's okay too. 
Now we've already sorted out the issue of your same guidelines. What you do, you put your fabric, I'm sewing at half an inch. You put your fabric under your presser foot. Now your presser foot should be up, your needle should be up. I'm just going to put the fabric and align it to my guideline here and start at the beginning. Then you put your presser foot down, you deliver, you put your needle down. If you have a needle up and down button, you can press that. Or you just roll your hand wheel in this direction towards yourself so the needle goes into the fabric. Now you're ready to sew. You start slowly, just step on your presser foot very gently. Now, another thing you can do when you sew for one or two stitches, or going to back stitch and lock the stitch. So you hold your reverse button or your reverse lever, whichever you have on your machine, and sew backwards, and then you continue sewing straight. Now, while sewing, the important thing to note is you keep your eye on the edge of the fabric and on the guideline, not on the needle. You don't look at the needle, just watch the guideline, watch the edge of the fabric and make sure it stays there. And that will guarantee that you sew straight. When you get to the end, just before you get off the fabric, you hold your reverse button and then continue sewing and then you're done you lift up the presser foot turn your fabric to the side roll your hand wheel once again to loosen the tension you see it comes loose and then you cut so you can see that's just how you make a simple line Let's do another one. Now, while you're sewing, you should always remember you should push your threads to the back of the machine so they don't get tangled in your work. Now, we've done one line. What I want you to do now, align the edge of your presser foot with the thread. We're going to make another line. Just going to align the edge of my presser foot to that stitch I made. Once again, you put your needle down into the fabric remember roll your hand wheel towards yourself now while you're sewing this keep your eye on the stitching line and the edge of the presser foot because that's what you're aligning to right now so once again we'll start sewing I'm going to sew in reverse to lock the stitch then I'll continue sewing keeping my eye on the edge of my presser foot and on the stitching line When we get to the end, we'll back stitch again, hold your reverse lever, sew a few stitches backwards, one or two stitches, and then sew forward, and you've locked your stitch. And lift your presser foot, turn the fabric, roll your hand wheel, that disengages your tension. Your tension gets loose when your presser foot goes up. And once again, we have another line. So that's a good way to practice. You do line by line by line. Now we're going to try and do a curved shape. It's the same principle. What you do is make sure you align the curved edge with your same guide. Once again, I'm going to put it under my presser foot. Align in it. Put my presser foot down my needle down and start sewing. Remember to back stitch at the beginning and to sew backwards. Now I'll continue sewing. Now all now the thing with curves don't sew too fast or else you might just sew straight off the fabric. You want to guide it gently. The feed dogs are helping you just guide it gently and follow the guidelines. Like this, you see, I'm getting to a curve. I'm just easing it with my fingers, making sure it's following the guideline. I 
just trying to maintain an even balance. You get to the end and to back stitch. Okay, lift your presser foot, turn your fabric, lift your needle, it comes out and cut. So you can see we have a seam. As I mentioned earlier, you can do something like this. Just draw on a piece of fabric and just follow the lines and practice. Should we try that? I'm going to start from the center, put my presser foot down, put my needle into the line I made. And now I'm going to start sewing. I'm not going to backstitch. This is just for practicing. Backstitching or using a reverse button is to lock a stitch. You don't need to use it if you're testing something or if the stitch is temporary and you're planning to remove it. But you use it when you want to make permanent stitches. Now I'm just going to try and follow my curved line carefully. Now in this case, I am turning the fabric myself. As you see, I'm going slowly because this is a tight curve. So this is a good exercise. If you can sew slowly, you are already there. Now, I'm keeping an eye on the needle and the line since I'm following the line. Basically, you keep your eye on the place that you need to keep your eye on. The, when you're sewing normally, you keep it on the edge of the fabric because that's the guideline you're following. I'm picking up speed. And now I'm just going to sew the rest of this. I'm done. Let's see how I did. So, those are my practice lines. I came out in a few places, but at least I'm going in a round. So you just keep on practicing. I guess even I need a little practice. Now, to sew corners, you already know how to sew straight. Once again, let me align my fabric here. Now, what you do, you start to align it at your guideline as always. Put your presser foot down, put your needle down. Now we're going to sew down to this corner first. I'm not going to backstitch, we're just practicing. So I'm just going to sew straight down to the corner. Now, I am sewing at half an inch seam allowance, so what I want to do, I have to make sure I stop at half an inch here so that when I go this way, it's the same measurement. A good trick is that if you have this type of machine, the edge of your presser foot here is half an inch. The distance from this to your needle is half an inch. So I only have to stop there, but you might have a different presser foot. You can easily just make a mark with your measuring tape at half an inch and stop there. So I am at half an inch. What I'll do is make sure my needle is down in the fabric. If it's not down, roll it down. Then lift your presser foot, turn your fabric, align it with the next with a guideline like that, put your presser foot down. As you see, I didn't lift my needle. Put your presser foot down and continue sewing. I'm getting to another corner. 
same thing I'm going to stop at half an inch because I'm sewing at half an inch seam allowance once again leave your needle in the fabric pivot or turn your fabric put your presser foot down and continue sewing I'm going to just stop at this edge so I'll lift my presser foot up bring out my fabric here we go so you can see that size so a smooth corner and you keep your seam allowance even all around. 